In today's video, we're going to learn about UI testing in your iOS app. Before we get into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, and let's jump into Xcode with a new project. We're going to create a app under the iOS tab. Let's call this project Account Center, and you guys will see momentarily why we're choosing that name. We'll stick with Swift, of course, Storyboard. Go ahead and continue, save it wherever you'd like. And I've taken the liberty of writing out a starter project that I will paste into this controller here so we don't waste time and we can focus directly on UI testing. Not a whole lot going on here. We basically have a login screen and a account controller. Let's run it in a simulator to just look at what we're going to be writing a unit test for or a UI test, I should say. Let's go ahead and give it a run. And here is the app we will be testing. So pretty uh, fancy looking login form here, if I don't say so myself. If we go ahead and type in the username, which is Afraz, if I type in the password, which is password, super secure, I know, and hit login, boom, we're in this account screen telling us welcome. Now, if I go ahead and give this a run once more and type in any nonsense in here and hit the button, we'll see a alert that tells us, hey, this is the invalid login that you've typed in. Basically, get your life together and try again. So we're going to write a UI test for this for the uh, successful case, which is also referred to pretty commonly as the happy path, which is typing in the proper username, password, hitting the button and verifying that we can actually get to the screen and see this label. So how do you go ahead and start uh, even writing UI tests? Well, we need to add a target specifically for this. So we'll go to File, New, and we're going to go to Target. And in here, we'll filter this down to UI. And it is smart enough to know that we want a UI testing bundle. We'll click it. And all the defaults here we can keep as is. Just to run through it very quickly, we have the product name, which is generally your project name suffixed by UI tests, your team, your organization ID, bundle ID, of course, similar to your main target, your language, your project that you're testing. And in this case, this is important. This is the target to be tested. So some larger projects, you might have individual libraries or multiple apps in a single project. This is where you would set that. But for the vast majority of folks, you will have one app that you are testing. So we'll leave it as is, hit continue. And this will create a new folder for us down here called Account Center UI Tests. Now we've got two files in here by default. We'll be taking a look at this one. And I'll just call out that you can also write out uh, launch tests and you can test various performance metrics of your application that I'll be covering in a separate video. So here in the uh, template, we'll get rid of all these comments and all the empty functions. And we'll talk about how to write out this test. So the setup here, we can leave as is. Looks like teardowns override isn't doing anything, so I'll just get rid of it. We are going to do our test example uh, function in here. We'll fill this out momentarily. And let's see, we don't really care about testing launch performance, but I'll just leave it here for the sake of just leaving it. So now that we've got this created, what we want to do is we want to write out a way where our app will be launched. It'll type out our username and password and hit that button and verify this label is here. So there is a pretty cool way we can actually automate Xcode writing this out for us. And that is known as recording a test. So first we'll stop running the application and down in our console's toolbar here, right next to this breakpoints icon, we have this red record button. And if we click it, essentially it's going to launch the app and we can run through our workflow. And on the left here, you'll see code being generated. So let's actually do that and then we'll talk through that code. So I'll hit that record button. We see that it's launched the app. I will tap into username here and go ahead and type out the username and password. We'll hit this login button and boom, we're in the account center. I'll finish up by hitting this welcome label here. And that's all we need to do essentially. We noticed that it actually didn't generate code for us. And this is one annoying thing about Xcode. Sometimes Xcode is a little flaky and you have to do it a few times uh, to make sure it actually shows up and it doesn't disconnect from the uh, runners, from the executable, the debugger, I should say. And we'll try this one more time, and this time it looks like it has generated some code for us. 
So if we pause it and take a look at what it spit out, we can get some interesting insight. So first and foremost, it looks like it has actually duplicated this application line code. So we already had this here. This app refers to the app that we are testing and the first command we give it is say, hey, go ahead and launch the app. The next thing we do is we say from the app, find a text field from text fields uh, with a ID of username and we wanna tap on it. Now, generally we wanna be making assertions throughout our test to verify that things are behaving as expected. And in this case, that assertion is, do we even have a username field or you know, are we, are we doing something wrong? So the way we would do that before even tapping on it is by saying that this guy here is our username field. And once we have a username field defined, we're gonna say assert true that our username field does in fact exist. And assuming it exists, we can actually say username field, go ahead and tap it. And the reason we wanna tap it is because we want it to be focused so we can tap, or rather type, I should say. So once we've focused on the field, we're gonna say type on in into this username field, whatever we wanna input, which is our username. And similarly, we wanna do the same thing for the password field. So here it looks for secure text fields. In this case, looks like it's pressing down for 0.1 seconds, perhaps it picked up when I was recording, we can get rid of this guy. And similar to the assertion we made up here, we wanna make an assertion down here that this username field and password field both exist. Once we've gone ahead and done that, we then want to, whoops, let's undo that. We then want to actually figure out whether or not the uh, field uh, has text in it. Rather, instead of figuring out, we want to type it in, I should say. So we're going to say type text, our super secret password, which is password. Please don't use this as a real password anywhere. Once we've typed our password, we can go ahead and uh, actually click on the button. So what it's saying here is it's saying find a static text with continue as its title or its label, I should say, and press on it. I believe this, in fact, will work, but a more appropriate thing to do would be to find a button with that label. So I'm gonna say app.buttons, and we're gonna say find continue. If we have found it, you guys know the drill at this point, we wanna assert that it does exist on our uh, screen. In other words, this is just querying for it, and it might return you know, no object. And if it exists, we can now actually tap it. And once we've tapped it, the final thing that we want to do is actually make sure we have our uh, label here for our logged in state. So I'll call this the account label. And the final thing we're gonna do here is assert that the account label does in fact exist. So let's give this a run and then we'll talk through it one more time and how to do some more interesting things. So let's go ahead and hit this little diamond next to the function and what you'll notice is that it will build and start running your app and what's cool is you can actually see it doing all the actions here on the right. It does them rather quickly. So in this case, it has succeeded. We see the green check mark here and you might not have uh, caught it there but Xcode does also do a transient pop-up saying it indeed passed. Now let's do a failure case very quickly for the sake of uh, just showing what would happen in the failure case. So we use the record button to get Xcode to spit out a good deal of the code that we then reworked for our assertions. So if you ever have a long uh, workflow that you wanna test end to end, perhaps you have like multiple view controllers, you gotta log in, you gotta do some other stuff, you can actually use a record to help you out quite a bit uh, in automating this process. Generally, you'll need to go back and, you know, tweak the code and add assertions since it's not perfect, but it definitely does like 50% of the work for you. The other thing that I wanna call out before doing that failure case here is the fact that in a lot of applications, let's say when you logged in, you usually go out and make an API call. So there's a spinner or some asynchronous operation. We can leverage XC expectations to allow for a timeout. In other words, when we hit the button, so button.tap, we check right away that we have an account label that exists. 
Now, in a real application, you might have a couple second delay based on the latency of your API call. Now, I'll be covering expectations and async testing in another video, but just an important call out. Let's do one more change in here and then we'll wrap it up. We notice that we have a login title at the top of the login view controller. So what I can do is I can say title is going to be app and it is static text. And maybe we look for login without a space. Now, obviously we don't have a label with this uh, particular identifier slash title. So we should in fact be failing here when I do title.exists. So let's go ahead and hit that uh, run button once more, which is in this case a check mark. It'll launch, try to find that button, and it'll fail right there, right away. And it'll say that XC assert true failed. One other pro tip, you can add a message here as well. We can say login label not found. Kind of a good practice when you're writing tests, especially in a professional environment, so people can actually see what actually failed versus a generic error. So let's change this to log in with the proper casing and space there. And we should be good to go with our end to end text execution. So looks like it's continuing, it's logged in and boom, we succeeded. Congrats, you've written your first UI Apple test for a iOS app. Mind you, you can also do this for other platforms, Mac OS, watch OS, iPad, of course. UI tests tend to be a little flaky sometimes, but definitely a critical skill that you should at least get exposed to if you're serious about becoming a iOS developer, landing a job, or just cleaning up your projects with some peace of mind. So that is all I've got for you guys today. If you're new here, welcome. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Let me know in the comments if you write UI tests, if you use a different framework, what else you guys want to see related to testing. Follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn. Love interacting with all you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.